Hey everybody, I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama, and this is my yard that's a total mess. And I'm staying under this because it looks like it's going to rain any second, and because I have a lot of stuff to show you. This video is going to be all about pests, particularly there's going to be a section about flies and mosquitoes, which will kind of go together, and then the first section that I'm going to knock out real quick is actually about wasps. So this video is particularly as it starts to get warm, and you know your area of the world is pretty much past freezing you're probably starting to get more rain things like that man it's like really dark over there solutions that i'm going to give you for dealing with flies and mosquitoes and wasps are all chicken friendly so um i'll talk about the solutions that you can do that are not chicken friendly but some of them are like absolutely crazy you know you certainly wanted to um you know try to eradicate the pests that you really don't want that pose a danger or they're just super annoying without you know just killing everything so i'll be telling you you know the homemade suggestions the cheap suggestions yeah there's stuff that you can buy but i tend to not be a huge advocate about going out and buying stuff if you can find junk around your house for free so really briefly again we're going to talk about flies and mosquitoes and wasps um let's talk about wasps first now i'm in south texas and if you haven't seen my coop before i'm not going to go over there right now because i'm going to get poured on i'm sure um, but I have old wasp nests and active wasp nests that are in there. And the deal that I've been, um, I guess, kind of battling with internally is, you know, how can I get rid of these wasps, but it not be obviously something that's going to hurt my chickens. I am going to give them a lot more space. Um, hopefully by the end of June, I'm going to like at least double the amount of square footage that my chickens have to run around in. I'm also hoping to rescue a couple of, of hens from some of the egg farms that are around here. Um, so, you know, I'm going to be giving them more space, but inheriting that old coop that was built here on this property, um, there are a lot of old wasp nests, and then there's active ones right now, which is, you know, ones that they are building. So um, the wasps that I have, and you may want to try to find a dead one or, you know, good luck trying to whack one with a stick or something so you could figure out what species that you have or even go on, you know, get a free app like iNaturalist and learn about, okay, in my area of the world, these are the kinds of, you know, wasps and bugs and things that I'm going to find. Just, I mean, it's just smart for you to know so that you have chickens. Here's what you need to remember, though, for all of these pests that we're talking about, and again, it's it's finding that balance of what's not harming my chickens and not bu bugging my chickens and not driving me crazy, but what's also not going to hurt my birds. Because if I'm trying to save my birds from wasps, there's a very small chance that the chickens are going to get hurt by wasps, by live wasps. Wasps very, 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 very rarely will sting a chicken, and chickens can eat wasps. Um, you know, they, they eat bugs, they forage that's just kind of what they do. I've had a couple of people tell me, no, chickens can't eat wasps, but I'm sure they would. And if you knock the nests down, I'm sure that the chickens would try to go after at least the eggs that are in the wasp nest. So here's the problem. You go in and you get, you know, you get your chickens in a different zone or whatever, and you say, I'm going to spray the hell out of these wasps and I'm going to get rid of them because you can use abrasive stuff. There's those toxic, you know, the, the spray cans of stuff that you can buy wasp killer. You can use brake cleaner that comes with like that little press, the little straw, you know, and then you've got the pressurized can. There's all different kinds of cleaners, you know, WD-40, that kind of stuff that's not really meant for killing wasps, but it'll kill the wasps. But then the problem becomes, even if you're aerating the area so that the smell is gone when you bring the chickens back in, if there is any wasp or any piece of the nest that falls down where your chickens can reach it, guess what? Your chickens are going to try to eat it, and now they've ingested whatever you just sprayed which is like, oh crap. So where the wasps are annoying and we don't particularly like them, I have probably six or eight active nests all around the coop right now. There's one way over here by the pocket of the nesting box. There's Most of them are all up in the rafters. Some of them are way up here, like where the chickens would never go. So while I don't like them, at the same time, it's like, is it gonna end up being more of a danger and more of a risk to my birds if I try to do something about the wasps than if I just leave them alone and say, hey man, I don't like you, just stay away from me, okay? Um, the wasps that I have, I believe, are paper wasps, and they're actually beneficial. From what I understand, they eat some other, they're kind of like helper bugs, is how I explain them to my kids. And they can eat mosquitoes, and um, they're also pollinators. So now it's like, oh crap. Ugh. What do I want to do? So what I'm definitely going to do is just knock down the inactive nests, the old dead nests. Um, well, actually, maybe I'm not. Okay, so here's what I've learned about wasps from doing the reading, and I'll, I, I apologize, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. So the thing with wasps is they're very territorial. Um, and also weirdly, I didn't know this until I did some reading today, they like the smell of meat. So like if you grill outside, like you 
attract wasps, which is really kind of weird. So there's a couple of different things that I've read that are that's safe. Um, apparently, if you paint the underside of your rafters, like what we can see, like, you know, the inside of the ceiling, if you will, if you paint it like the color of the sky, the wasps won't try to build a nest on it because they're not very smart and they think that's the sky that they're looking at. Um, additionally, if you, hang, you can make a fake wasp nest, like a big one out of a brown paper bag, and because wasps are territorial, if they think somebody's already there, they're not going to try to come over and take that area, if that makes sense. Like, oh, that's already claimed by a rival gang, I'm going to stay out of that zone. Um, so these things I haven't tried. So the other benefit would be if you leave those old inactive nests, maybe new wasps wouldn't come by. Now, unfortunately, that hasn't worked in this coop because, like I said, I have a whole bunch of old wasp nests, and there's still new active ones you know, within two feet of the old one. So I apologize for my hand. I'm being eaten alive by mosquitoes because I'm not using my own remedies. Um, so I don't like the wasps being around. And as we do work on expanding the coop run and everything this summer, I don't want to be dealing with, with wasps. So I think if they're around the outside of the rafters, if they're over in a zone where I'm not really going to access much, like if they're around on the backside, like the far end, I'll leave them alone. Um, but if they're up in the roosting area or if they're like right there where I have to open the nesting box door like every day, that's a problem um, and I am gonna do something about it. So here's what you can do that's particularly, um, it's for wasps, but there's variations of this kind of stuff that you can use for, for other pests. I'm sure it would work on anthills, it works on weeds, things like that. Um, the best thing to do the most, um, I guess as far as, as spraying and things, the most accurate thing would be to fill a spray bottle with, and there's a couple of different concoctions you can make. I have a deodorizing spray, and I did a video a long time ago, if you want to search my channel for it, um, that's just a chicken safe spray that's basically just essential oils, and the essential oils are totally safe for the chickens. It makes the coop smell good, and a lot of that stuff is also bug repelling. Um, so, I mean, we're talking lemongrass, we're talking lavender, we're talking peppermint, um, you know all of that stuff and then mixing it with equal parts white vinegar and water that's going to be more of a deodorizing spray but the especially the peppermint oil is a deterrent for wasps they hate it they hate the smell of peppermint which is why you can see my i put my peppermint plant i'm like putting it closer to the coop i've got lavender i have two lavender plants i have rosemary i have peppermint all of those herbs pretty much any fresh herb that you can get anything that's aromatic especially if it's minty or lemony um those are going to be things that are going to repel all kinds of bugs and we'll talk more about that in a little while so you could do something like that um, you can find other mixes that involve essential oils and dawn um, dawn like we're talking the original blue dish liquid um, and the reason that you use that because I've used it on a spray to kill there's a, a crazy stupid annoying vine that's growing through that whole area and of course I don't want to kill everything I just want to kill the stuff that I want to kill um, and so what I'm using for that is bleach with Dawn. And the Dawn, if you add it in any of your sprays, just so you know, the Dawn acts as a binding agent. So it helps whatever else is in the mix stick to whatever you're spraying it at. So in this case, it, the Dawn would help the essential oils or the bleach or the vinegar or whatever you're spraying, it would help it stick to the wasp nest. Now, of course, if you're spraying a couple of tips um, in particular dealing with wasps, and then we'll move on. When you're dealing with wasps, they are a lot more sluggish, almost kind of like they're drunk um, when it is dark. So right now, within the next 30 minutes, as it gets dark, but to where there's still enough light that I can see would be great to knock down nests or to do spraying or really early in the morning. You do want to do it without using like a headlamp or a bright light because the wasps will be attracted to the light. So you don't want to add any artificial light while you're doing it, but you do want to do it, you know, at the end of the day. If there's a day where it's going to be colder, definitely do it then because, um, you know, wasps get very, um, you know, very sluggish, very slow moving. I mean, you can essentially freeze a bee alive if you put them in the fridge and you can transport them. And then when they warm up, it's like they come back to life. They weren't dead. They're just dormant because they were so cold. So you want to be dealing with wasps that are calm and that are, you know, more, um, just less active. <laughs> Somebody sitting up there on top of the chicken coop. Oh, there you go. Again, like I said, herbs are really, really great. You could paint the underside of the coop. Um, just having good ventilation is good anyway. 
So those are all of the tips. If you've got things that are chicken safe that work for any of these things, for any questions, any comments, suggestions, whatever, please, please, please drop them in the comments and say, for wasps, I use blah, 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 or you know, for whatever, I use this, so that we can teach each other and help each other. Um, I have a whole bunch of options at my disposal. I just haven't done anything yet because I've kind of been biting my nails on, do I want to get rid of the wasps? You know, because if they eat mosquitoes, that'll be really helpful. But you know, like the nest that I found today was kind of like, okay, that's it. Like I need to make a video about this and that one's got to go because I try to, to not kill animals because, you know, like, ew, a cockroach is gross, so I'm going to kill it. Or, ew, I don't like flies. Like, I try to see the value in every animal, but there comes a point where it's like, okay, like, I need to, I need to make the right decision here. So, that's wasps. And again, the ones that I have are paper wasps, and they are nest-building wasps. They are supposedly territorial. Look at Gracie. They are supposedly, you know, territorial. Hi, honey. They are attracted to light. They do hate aromatic herbs. Um, I don't think aromatic just flowers works the same way, like gardenia, you know, um, lilacs, things like that. I don't think it works the same way. Um, I have trumpet vine that's right there that's very aromatic and that hasn't done anything. And this monstrosity is a lemon tree that's never had a pruning in its life and, you know, that hasn't deterred them. So there you go. Um, all of those herbs that I was mentioning, they're chicken safe. The problem is depending on your chickens, they may eat them and they may not. Um, I gave my chickens fresh basil today and they devoured it because my basil plants, I don't know if you can see them. There's two of them there past the head discus. They're like exploding. So I gave the chickens some and they devoured it. So, I mean, you can put herbs in with your chickens to deter, but I mean, <laughs> your herbs may disappear. So now let's talk flies. When I'm talking about flies, I'm talking about house flies. And I had a dead one to show you. Let's see if the, the body is still here. It may not be here anymore. Now I'm not talking I don't see the body. We'll have to see if one shows up that I can show you. I'm not talking the big, huge, gigantic, buzzing, to use the word again, monstrosities that are like bigger than a pea, that are huge and have a painful bite. Those are horse flies. Horse flies you're probably not going to get in a neighborhood. Those are going to be more out in farmland. And they're certainly a pain and they can carry disease. Um, but you know in a neighborhood you're not gonna see those the ones that are just annoying and stupid and dirty and gross and like dog poop and that kind of stuff Those are just house flies is what I call them and they're the big black, you know stupid ones um, So for those they like stuff that stinks right and that's why they're so disgusting me because if they come and land on you or your food You know, they've probably been out in in dog poop and in mud and dirt and all kinds of other stuff So they like stinky stuff the problem is you want to put the stinky stuff away from where you are. So I wouldn't want to hang a fly trap right here on my beautifully redone porch that my husband just did because he's awesome. Um, you know, you wouldn't want to hang it right here because now you have to smell it. So there are lots of different things you can do with fly traps and I'll be, I'll be really, really brief. So again, the herbs, never a bad idea. You could feed them to your chickens. You can dry them and put them in nesting boxes. There's all, and I've got flies on me now, of course, but as soon as I move, they fly away. Um, so, you know, herbs are always a great idea. I could go on and on about the benefits of those. Oh, hummingbird. There is a wide range of things you can do trap-wise. Again, you want stinky stuff. So literally, it could be a piece of raw meat that, I'm sorry, yes, it's going to rot and it's going to be disgusting. Um, you know, you could pick up, if you have dogs, put a piece of dog poop in there. Um, it's better if it has, in my opinion, it's better if it has liquid. Like you can see that, that trap hanging there in the center of your shot. That one is nice. I think it runs about $10 um, because it's got, it's basically a container that you continue to use over and over again. And when it gets full of, sorry, the bodies of hundreds of flies because they will, you know, drown in the liquid and they can't get out, then you basically go and dump it out somewhere, but you can reuse the container. And if you want to, I found this, um, this is the fly trap attractant. And so, it's nasty. That's just like old nasty <laughs> cobwebs because we just moved and this has been sitting in a box. Um, so you can see in the with the black, it says for reusable fly traps. So that way I feel like I'm not being as wasteful. You can certainly buy strips. There are some people in the um, for in the chicken forum that I'm a, a part of that like swear by these and they love these that will kill the flies. The problem is if they're killing all the flies, that means they're attracting them first. So you want to just hang it up and out of the way. You don't want your chickens getting into any of that stuff. And of course, the way all these traps work is it's the same concept as a lobster trap or a minnow trap or any of those other traps is you make it easy for them to get in and you make it really hard for them to get out. You can make your own traps. I mean, go look on Google or look on Pinterest. 
um, you basically take like a gallon milk jug or like a two liter bottle would work better. You cut it in half and you invert one. So it's easy for them to go down into the funnel to get in, but then they're too stupid to figure out how to get out. And you can put netting over it or, or whatever. There's lots of different ways. But the key is it's easy for them to get in and it's hard for them to get out and it has to be something that stinks. The other thing that I'm gonna try this year, and I bought them, so I'm gonna show you, is people on the chicken forum have told me that fly repellent, not fly traps, so just keeping them away, a fly repellent is the vanilla trees that you hang in your car. And these are like, you can buy these at a gas station, you can buy them at the pharmacy, you can buy them in bulk on Amazon, and apparently, like, I can't smell it through the package, but apparently these things like really, really, really stink. And it's just the vanilla one, so don't go get black ice or any of those other goofy smells. I just get the vanilla one. But supposedly, specifically the trees, don't go buy Yankee Candle or Glade or any other goofy stuff. Uh, supposedly just the trees, just the vanilla, is also a fly deterrent. So because I have a whole bunch of high up hooks where my chickens can't get to and peck because sometimes they're really stupid, um, I'm going to hang these up and see what happens. Okay, for the kids and I, I wanted to kind of drop this in um, because for flies and mosquitoes it's much it's much the same for some reason since having kids I am attacked by mosquitoes like mercilessly I hate mosquitoes with the fire of a thousand suns a um, couple of little random things about mosquitoes they can see your veins their vision works differently than ours so they kind of it's not x-ray but they, they can basically see where your veins are they can bite you through your clothing and um, it is the females who suck blood because, of course, so um, you just want to be really clean. Um, mosquitoes, of course, can carry disease for us. It's, it is rare, but it can be very, very serious. Um, I have hummingbirds over on my hibiscus over there. Did you see it? Um, flies, going back to flies real quick. Yeah, they're an annoying as hell and they're dirty and they're gross, but that's not really dangerous for your chickens. It's just annoying. What's dangerous for your chickens is that there are a couple of diseases they can get by a fly bite. Um, the one that comes to mind right now is foul pox, which is really gross. And you see it outwardly. It look, almost kind of looks like your chicken's turning into a leper. You start to see on their face, um, like around their comb and their wattles and stuff, that they get like these boils, these blisters, and usually they're, they're black. You can go look it up. It's called foul, like F-O-W-L pox. Um, so that's why you might want to do something proactive about flies. So let me show you this one thing with mosquitoes, and then I have a couple of other tips real quick. This is what I use, this is what I use, focus, um, putting on the kids and I, when we go out for nature walks, I mean, we're, we're nerds and naturalists and that's what we like to do on the weekends, um, is basically just be outside, be here or go to a park or go discover new, um, trails or whatever. And, you know, you can get the, you know, you can get the, the sprays and stuff that have DEET or the ones that are sunscreens and bug sprays and all of the other stuff, but that stuff just makes me nervous as hell because little kids... You know, they, they wipe their faces on their arm and they pick their nose and they stick their hands in their mouth and all of that stuff. And that stuff just scares the hell out of me. Now, of course, if my children were going to, I don't know, they were going to Africa or if my children had mosquito allergies, they were allergic to the mosquito bites or something, then I, I think I would, you know, of course, handle the situation differently. But I try to, I mean, you guys know me, it's like everything else. Like I want to try to fix problems, but I want to try to do it in the least harmless way possible. The one that's not as controversial or that's not as extreme and toxic chemicals and all of that other stuff. So I found that just pure lemongrass oil works really really well now let me give you a suggestion if you have children that are under, and I'm kind of doing a tangent here if you have children who are under like three years old or kids who have sensitive skin whether it's eczema or they just burn easily or they just have sensitive skin you don't want to put it directly on their skin or you can test a little area first um, you can put this lemongrass oil and it doesn't have to be this brand this is like the cheap one from the grocery store it's not doTERRA and it's not any of the crazy expensive ones you don't need that crap like this cheap one is fine um, you're not ingesting it or anything like that um, but you can mix it with equal parts water and witch hazel and that makes it kind of like a carrier and then put some of these drops in and then use it as a spray. You can put it, like I said, you can put it on clothes and on shoes. Hell, I wipe it on my kids' sneakers and stuff. It will not stain. It will not damage clothing or burn through it or anything like that. Um, I can put it directly on my skin. It doesn't bother me. You're going to smell like lemongrass, you know, but that's the point. Um, and then you wash your clothes and it's gone. But lemongrass oil, not lemon, lemongrass. So, um, I mean, you smell herby <laughs> I guess um, but um, it, it works like a charm I can put it directly on my five and a half year old skin it's fine um, even when they sweat it's not a problem it lasts all day and like I, I honestly I'm buying another bottle and I'm throwing it in my purse and keeping it in my purse this one lives on the porch so lemongrass oil is a great 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 mosquito deterrent it works like a dream 
Um, so that's my vote. The other things that I was going to say in general to prevent all of these flying, annoying pests where it's like, I don't want to hate you and I don't want to kill you, but you're pissing me off, man. Um, you need to keep, there's a couple of tips just in general, in your yard, in your chicken coop, in your life. The first one is um, you need to keep everything well ventilated. Um, if it's cold, if it's rainy or whatever, then I mean, get you some tarps or some plastic sheet or whatever that you can put up. But the more fresh air you have blowing through, it keeps the temperature down. It'll keep the flies away. Um, it helps with smell. I mean, it helps with everything. Going along with smell, especially house flies and horse flies, they like stinky stuff. So if you are not cleaning out your coop regularly, if you're not getting the poop out of there, yes, it's good for compost. Yes, it'll go back to the earth. Yes, it's good for all of that, but you can't leave it sitting in there. So you need to keep the area clean. And then particularly for mosquitoes, you don't want to have any standing water around that's open. So um, my bird baths, I clean out every couple of days, but I'm talking about like big puddles or, you know, standing water like after it rains. Um, I flip everything upside down like that trash can gets turned around. Um, any other stuff that I have around here all gets put away if there's going to be rain. Um, and if I don't get to it proactively, then as soon as it's rained, I come out and I make sure everything's dumped over. I make sure my kids know that. Also, I just got a mosquito on my hand. You ballsy little... Okay. Um, but I make sure that everything is dumped out so that there's no standing water. Mosquitoes lay their eggs in water and they normally don't ever venture in their entire life cycle very far from where they were, um, where they were hatched. So if you've got standing water five feet from your door, you're going to have a ton of mosquitoes five feet from your door. So, um, you know, clean water, getting rid of standing water, making sure that you've got lots and lots of ventilation and just keeping the area clean. Um, if you've got dogs, that means cleaning up dog poop on the regular. We are, we just have a pile of it that's back there and we just dump it as far away from us as we can and then it dries out in the sun and, you know, the beetles go after it and it's fine, but we just don't want it close to the house. So, that's all of my information on flies and mosquitoes and wasps. I'm really sorry that I didn't have a fly corpse to show you. It blew away. Um, you know, and again, this is at best just keeping annoying things away from you and at worst it's keeping you and your chickens or your you know whatever fowl you have keeping them from getting so at best this is keeping annoying pests away from you from your children from your family from your house from your coop and at worst it's you know keeping disease away so i'm sarah the real simple mama thanks for watching I hope that this gave you just a little bit of information to decide what works for you. Again, for wasp sprays and all of that stuff, there's there's a ton of different recipes, a ton of different combinations, but now you kind of have an idea of how that formula works and the kinds of ingredients that you'll probably be seeing over and over again in all of the different recipes. But let me know in the comments if you have questions, if you need clarification. Um, I mean, I can go and do another video with close-up shots of wasps. I just don't really feel like doing it right now because I'm going to get rained on, I'm sure. Um, but let me know, you know, what you do. Some people like diatomaceous earth. Other people don't like it because it's a risk. Um, you know, certainly if you're spraying anything where, like, there are some wasp killers where, like, you have to take your clothes off and throw your clothes away after you spray it. Like, everything you were wearing when you used the spray, you have to throw in the trash. And it's like, well, how in the hell would that be safe for my chickens? That, to me, is just, like, over the top. So I'm trying to find something that's safe for everybody. I mean, except for the wasps, I guess. <laughs> so let me know what you're doing, what you think, what works for you, and we will be back soon with more content. I'm going to do a video about how to help your chickens when it's raining because they're not the brightest stars in the sky. Um, I have a treat ball demo that I'm going to do this week. Um, lots of content coming, and yes, the coop name is coming out soon as well. So you guys take care. Let us know in the comments what you think, and we'll be back soon. Thanks for watching.